Hey everybody, Basic Dad back here. Gonna cook uh, up again on the Blackstone E-Series. <clears throat> this time, nothing fancy, nothing sexy, just a simple steak. Kroger had their prime rib um, on sale, so I picked up you know, a nice um, thick slice of, uh, of the prime rib. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna season it up, very simple. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, salt and pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. I mean, that's really all you need. You don't have to get fancy with the seasoning. I mean, this would be really good if I just did salt and pepper. So I'm gonna get that on there. I'm gonna heat up the grill. I'm probably gonna do this at somewhere between 350, 375, and we're gonna see how this indoor griddle cooks up a steak. All right, we're gonna turn the griddle on. I'm gonna flip this temperature. Uh, I'm gonna do it at 375. It's a pretty thick piece of steak. I wanna make sure I get a good sear. Um, I'm not a rare type, I'm a medium rare, so you know I, I don't want it to be red all the way out, but I do want some, some pink and red in it. So we'll set it, let it come up to temperature, and we'll get cooking. You know, while we're waiting for this to come up to temperature, I just wanna take maybe a minute or so, and just to say how impressed I continue to be with this cooking surface. I mean, I've used this thing a number of times and no matter what I cook, it's really, really easy to kind of clean off. Um, and as long as I'm careful not to use aluminum or metal utensils, um, the cooktop surface is really holding up. Um, I haven't had any issues with cold spots or hot spots. Um, you know, the only thing I, wished a little bit more is this was a little bit more slope so, um, so a lot of the grease and things like that could go off um, but so far really really impressed um, so I just wanted to uh, you know if folks are watching and they really want to know how this thing holds up I mean I've had it and I've cooked a number of meals uh, and this thing is almost just like the day I got it. It was starting to get <clears throat> get this up to temperature um, we've got an orange bar. There'll be one more, two more orange bars to, to go. But uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, get this thing ready to throw the steak on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little butter, not because I need it for nonstick, but I want it for the flavor. And I'm going to take my thick steak there, throw that on there. And at 375, I probably will let this go for about five to seven minutes. I'll be watching just to see how the edges crisp up. Still love having the handle here where I can close this and uh, trap some of that heat in there to uh, to ensure that uh, that steak will get cooked as well. So. I decided 350 for that thick of, uh, or 375 for that size steak probably too low of a temperature. It would take a lot longer to cook it. So I've gone up to 425. <clears throat> um, hopefully I didn't make a mistake. We'll see how it turns out. All right, we've been uh, cooking this <clears throat> now for about five to six minutes on this side. So I'm gonna flip it. Moment of truth, do we get some sear? Do, do I get some crust? Wow, look at that. I mean, that is just perfect, beautiful. That crust, that sear on there, that's fantastic. I'm gonna let the other side go now for about, I don't know, maybe another five minutes, and then I'm gonna do the edges. And while this continues to cook up, I just wanted to highlight, um, I didn't trim any of the fat off of it. I like to cook my steaks with the fat on it um, to bring out those flavors. When I sear the sides to seal it in, I'm gonna cook, um, leave it with the fat on. And then um, once it's had time to rest and I start eating it, you know, certainly I'm just not gonna eat a big, I'm not a big chunk of fat, but I like to cook my steak with the fat on it because I like to get the grease and the juice and all those flavors just to kind of come out. I just really think it makes the steak um, more flavorful 
and um, juicier. We've been cooking this <clears throat> now for about five minutes. Let's see if we can get a look at the other side. And, and look at that. I mean, that sear, nothing left behind on the griddle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this thing ready and I'm going to see if I can sear the sides. <clears throat> so I just kind of hold it, you know, a minute or so, just like this around the whole steak. Sear that side up. Really try to make sure I can seal in all those juices and flavors. This will put a little crust on that fat as, as well. I'm done searing around the sides. I'm going to pull this steak off and I'm going to let it sit and rest for about 10 minutes. We'll let that rest for about 10 minutes and we'll see what we got. It's been sitting about seven to 10 minutes. I'm gonna cut through it. And that's perfect. That's exactly how I like my steaks. So, cooked a steak on the indoor griddle. <clears throat> Just to shows, you know, you don't have to just do everything outside on a grill. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love a steak on, on the grill outside uh, <clears throat> or a big time outdoor griddle. This indoor griddle cooked, I don't know, about a half an inch, maybe an inch thick prime rib steak to perfection. Only thing left to do is to give it a bite. Let's cut a piece off and... See, see what we're working with here. I mean, that's that's the perfect bite. Really well seasoned, good sear, still warm in the middle, just the way I like it. Perfect steak. Hey, like I said. Nothing fancy, nothing sexy, just a simple steak. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe button. Thanks for the recommendation to cook this steak. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to see me cook on this Blackstone Indoor E-Series, um, just let me know.